Hi and welcome. In this video, I'm going to discuss a question. Does a garter need a pommel? And by a pommel, I mean something like the end and on the end of this Indian club. So it's a ball at the end. In my opinion, it does not. So very, very quickly, I'm just going to read through a few notes about the history of the pommel and then the history of the mace. Historically, the name pommel comes from the Anglo-Norman term pommel, meaning little apple. The pommel was originally developed to prevent a sword from slipping out of your hand, depending on whether you were cutting or thrusting or whatever you were doing. From the 11th century, they became heavy enough to counterweight the, the sword blade itself. So that means that the um, because the, the, the pivot of the sword was in your hand, the, the, the swordsman could control the tip of the sword much better. So consequently, that was working really well, like a pair of scales, if you like. The pommel was designed to improve the grip and balance of a sword. This gave the sword a point of balance not too far away from the hilt, allowing for more control and a fluid fighting style. And just as a really a matter of interest, you can imagine that the, with a sword with a pommel was also used the other way around. That means that the fighter would take hold of the blade of the sword with both hands and use the, the pommel as a weight to strike the opponent. And that method is called the Mordau technique for sword fighting. Now then, in contrast, the history of the mace. The mace is a close combat blunt weapon that is designed for clubbing, bruising, bashery, bashing, whatever you like to call it. It is not designed to cut skin and draw blood with the accuracy of a sword. The mace is intended to be very clumsy and difficult to handle featuring a long shaft with a weight at one end and a complete lack of counterbalance. And I'm sure that you all know basically what I'm talking about. Here it is here, the humble mace. So enough history. Now, I think something which is very, very important to um, establish here. If I take one of these clubs, this one weighs two pounds. It has a pommel on it. Now, this, this weight, the, the mass of weight on this club is greater than it should be, simply because it was used for exercise purposes. But uh, the pommel on a sword balanced out the weight of the, um, the blade, and it was also no more than two pounds. So consequently, this is the sort of object that we're talking about here. And in contrast, the average mace weighs from eight pounds, say up to about 30 and more pounds, which is a lot heavier. So you can't have a pommel that, but that counterbalances at the end here to, the, to the, um, the head of the mace. So, put that away. Now, a traditional mace from India does not feature a pommel. The mace is not intended to be balanced like a sword and does not need a pommel, therefore. Now we have, now le leading up to the reality, we have a common misconception. Modern day mace manufacturers have opted to place a pommel at the end of their mace handle, stating that the pommel is there for safety reasons. Safety reasons. Namely, to stop the mace from flying out of an athlete's hand during use. Now, this presents a problem, a major problem to my mind. The downside of the pommel on a mace is that it promotes bad habits by choking the hands against each other and the pommel in what I call a death grip. And this is particularly true for unsuspecting beginners. And I call this the choked death grip. It's quite a mouthful, so we'll just go death grip for the rest of it. And I'm just going to quickly demonstrate what I'm talking about. And if I just go, I'm going to do it with a club because I don't have a pommel mace here. 
you can see that the pommel is at the end of the, um, the, the club handle here. One hand slides up against here, the other one slides up against there, and there they are. The hands are choked directly in front of the, against the pommel. So again, one hand is against the pommel here, the other one is against the, the other hand, or the other way around. That one there, that one there. And this is going to, now I'm going to talk about the problems that this creates. Right, page three. The knock-on effects of a pommel mace in use. The first swing that a beginner makes of a pommel with a pommel mace automatically forces the athlete's hands together into the choked death grip which I've just described. Now, you can imagine, there's a weight at the back of the body, the mace is pulling down, and the unsuspecting beginner, and even the advanced, the, the intermediate or advanced athlete, is allowing the pommel to pull, the, pull, their, um, pull into their hands, into the cushion of the back of the hand. Now, the death grip prevents the backswing swooping action of the mace, where the athlete should achieve full triceps extension at the center back and swing the mace pivoting from the elbows. So now I'm going to talk about the swoop, the triceps and the elbow pivot first. Okay, and for that I'm going to basically put this one away and we'll just use a pole so that I can show you very clearly. So you have to imagine that there's a pommel here, there's a slight thickening there so I'm just going to use that, my hands against the pommel and against the mace. Now, in the back swing, so if I come forward, place the, put the, the, the handle here, you can see here, basically this is, the, if I'm holding that, this is as far down as it will go. But if I use a relaxed grip, I can allow the, the, um, the handle to go much deeper. And this is what I'm calling the swoop, so that the, this mace swoops into the back, before it comes out on the other side, as opposed to this type of thing here. Now, what's very important about this, that the, the, the swoop at the back creates a full triceps extension, and the elbows pointing upwards, and it means that the mace is swinging from the elbow, up here, and not the wrist. That's very, very important. So, moving on. So in, in, instead, the death grip forces the athlete to swing the mace, pivoting the, and their hands behind their head rather than the nape of the neck, which I've just described, and exposes them to elbow tendonitis, plus the range of motion of the shoulder girdle is restricted. So again, if I now go into the death grip here, both hands together, Place the mace behind here, you can see I can't really get it much further. I cannot go into this type of position here unless I change my hand position. So if my pan positions are locked here, that's where I'm going to swing from. So what, where, where does that mean? The, the mace is going to pivot from here as opposed to pivoting from my elbow when it's up in that position here. Okay. And because the um, the swing is made from the wrist, it's exposing a, the elbow, both elbows, to a huge amount of pressure and the possibility of tendonitis. And I know that by my own experience, because when I first started swinging the mace, I swung it like this, and I used to regularly have sore elbows, and it would take me two or three weeks to get over it. And I think now that's um, manifests itself in a lot of people swinging the mace with elbow protection on their, on their elbows themselves. And that tells me one thing, that they're not swinging the mace correctly. Okay, moving on. The death grip also inhibits the correct upper body transverse turns and counterbalance of the mace head during the upward and downward phases of each swing because the athlete tends to keep their shoulders square and facing front. So here we go. Again, with this grip, 
the, the, the actually tends because they're, they're thinking about this all the time, the mace goes up like this and there. It's a very shallow movement if you have a look. Shallow there, shallow there. If I go the opposite way, shallow. If you have a look, the hands are almost going vertically up and down, around the back of my head and back up again. The correct movement, if I just change my grip slightly, the correct movement from here is that the, the body should turn, counterbalancing the mace head into the back swoop, coming out, counterbalancing, and round again. Now, if you watch the tip of the mace, it goes up, down swoop, bringing up, and back down again, and then it creates a heart shape, which I'll talk about more in a minute. So there's a big difference. Here, it's purely circular. So there's the, the circle here, and it's very shallow at the front, as opposed to a deep movement down the front. There. So the body, the upper body is activated more. Now, so we've just had a look at the, the um, inhibiting the, the correct upper body transverse turns counterbalance. Once the back swing is completed, the mace handle is returned to the front of the body, maintaining the death grip. And this is, leads to another problem. The death grip forces the forearms to be parallel with the floor and away from the body in preparation for the next swing and keeping the forearms and biceps engaged throughout. This leaks energy and precious energy and exhausts the athlete's grip. And here we go again. So basically, if you, if, now the, the, if you just imagine that I've swung the mace through, so I've swung it through in this grip here and it's come back down to here and now I've got it here. Now if you have a look, look at the position of the mace. It's right in front of me. My forearms are engaged, my biceps is engaged, holding the weight up. And this is just leaking energy and it's, it's wasting my grip. I mean, I, you know, this is an endurance thing and I don't want it to waste my grip strength. So consequently, it has to go into this position here close to the body. So the resulting swing is made in a circular fashion and the athlete cannot take advantage of the push and pull method which is used when swinging a mace with no pommel creating a heart shaped swing pattern. And I'm just going to now show you those again. But this time I'll use a, a proper mace to do. So here we go. Starting from this position here, swing the mace and it's going to go in a circle. So, one, I could really feel my hands tensioned up and my shoulders and my forearms and biceps are tensioned up. Where well, if I swing a heart shape now, starting from this low rack position here, very intimate with the mace. And you can see how intimate I am here, as opposed to this position there, down here. And now, you can see, push up, pull down, push up, pull down. This is also for the 360, as I've just demonstrated, and the 10 to 2. So, the 10 to 2, done. From this position, is basically swung, it literally makes it, it reaches the top and drops. As opposed to one, two, three. There's another problem here. The circular mace swing tends to accelerate, especially in the 360. Again, a problem for a beginner, because that means that the, um, the mace is controlling the athlete and the athlete is not controlling the mace head. 
and you get an acceleration. It's happened to me personally, and I think it happens to a lot of people, and there are a lot of um, YouTube videos out there that display that very, very well. Now finally, there's a couple of other things. When an athlete um, swings a mace using a choke death grip, they display a rocking action because they're going like this, because they're swinging from the center of the chest. Rocking action. Whereas in contrast, when an athlete swings a mace with no pommel, a fluid grip, transverse turn, using the push and pull method, their feet are firmly placed on the ground and their hips are facing forward, moving the upper body, arms and shoulders to counterbalance the weight. So I'm just going to try and demonstrate that for you again. So from here, starting from here, okay, here we go. So circles, one, So the weight's really high up here. So there's the rocking action, as opposed to what? Now my upper body's just working. Now ten to two. Perhaps this is wrong, too high up because of the pommel, and then. So as you can see, I mean, I, I think that there are massive problems. I don't have a mace like that to demonstrate. I don't want to have a go at any particular manufacturer either. They know who they are. Now, as far as competitions go, just a quick word finally. To me, a mace competition in India is basically done. They start off, well, let's say, they, they'll start off with a 15 kilo, then they'll go to a 20 kilo, then they'll go to a, tw um, a 25, a 30, 35, 40. And it's whoever can do the most reps and they go to failure, okay. Racing with the, the mace or, you know, when, when you've got a competition, when there is, um, like the kettlebell competitions where there's guys racing against each other, I think ruins the, um, the, uh, the form that people have. And unless the judges are very, very knowledgeable about the form and what it should be, then the, um, the, the competitions of, of a race against uh, two people racing against each other or three basically makes no sense because there's somebody in there who is going to compromise their form for the, for the sense of speed. And the circular swing, as I said earlier on, it does accelerate and it's basically a shorter movement than the, the full pull down here, the swoop at the back, as opposed to just working from here to here. You can see that that's a, that's a much shorter distance for the hands to travel. Therefore, it's going to be quicker. And if somebody is mentally trying to, to race, they're going to compromise their form. So I hope this really helps you um, think about this. It's a big subject and um, there's a lot, lots of bones of contention that I know about it, but it's just my personal point of view that I'd like to put forward. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.